Um, I did this report two days ago, knowing that today was a big day. Does anybody remember Sean and Keaton in the room cannot answer? Anybody know what happened today that was some big news in the investment world? Yes, interest rate hike, 0.25%. These are my only notes here. 0.25% today, that means the prime rate will move up to 6.7%. That's the highest it's been since March of 2001. Bank of Canada expects inflation to drop to about 3% by the middle of the year and should get back to its target by 2% of 2% sometime next year. So that's all the updates I'm going to be uh, offering on that because you do have Sean and you've got Keaton who is on our power team in the back. So if you have any mortgage or finance questions, um, you can go track those guys down. So uh, there we go. Okay, so... We are in times of uncertainty. That means there's some good news and bad news. So I have both of that to share today. First off, uh, we do like to show this. This is the uh, um, dated information because we are unfortunately always at the end of the month. And this is uh, from last month. This is December 2022 Ray uh, stats. Um, for anybody that's interested, the Realtors Association of Edmonton is very quick on giving updated information uh, usually it's out about the second day of the next month. So February 2nd is when January should be out. But uh, just to quickly talk about what's happened, you can look at this. Basically, there should be downward arrows. Down, down, down. It was a cool December in uh, not only, for those of you who remember, minus 30 weather. It also got pretty cool in the uh, real estate world for uh, real estate. So I do like to bring up the home price index. I'm a very big fan of the home price index. It's a great way to analyze neighborhoods. This is for all properties, the Edmonton Composite. And this is the roller coaster ride that Edmonton went through for overall values from December 2021 to December 2022. And as you can see, we almost ended up basically back where we were a year ago. Again, this is the HPI benchmark uh, stats. So if you want more information on that, you can reach out to a mobile agent who ex can explain to you what the HPI is. So in a word or in a few words, 2022 was a wild ride. December was cool, but we're all here to talk about 2023. So let's get into that right now. First off, inflation. December inflation for Canada hit 6.3%. That's down 6.8% in November. And most likely why the Bank of Canada only did a 0.25% rate increase today, because they are starting to see things trending downward. Now, the 6.3% is mainly due to lower gas prices. If you talk about core inflation, which means you're taking out food and gas, it actually stayed the same. Uh, Alberta was 6%. The Canadian annual inflation rate was 6.8%. That's the highest it's been since 1982. We are living in historical times, so enjoy it. Uh, again, the good news is it seems that we are trending down a little bit. Now, we're going to talk about the bad news first. We are feeling the effects. Microsoft to shed 10,000 jobs, adding to a glut of tech layoffs. We can also talk about uh, Spotify, who just recently announced a 6% reduction in employment. Um, several thousand people about to lose their jobs. Incredible challenges at Shopify talking about also layoffs and the stock plunging. And Post Media. Now, Post Media, which would be the Edmonton Journal and the Calgary Herald, I'm sure this has something to do with the long-term trend of just newspapers starting to uh, contract a lot. But uh, certainly the pandemic and where things are going and how people are doing things a lot more online has a lot to do with the layoffs plan for Post Media. And Aurora Cannabis, an interesting story there in the fact that uh, they put, they, they said they were going to shut their uh, um, their plant out by the airport down. They've now sold it for $15 million, and they're talking about 8% of their workforce being impacted by that. So there's definitely some things that are going on, uh, not only in Edmonton and Alberta, but around the world. But there are some good things happening as well. You can see that 20 companies are hiring this month. And there's a list of some of the people. Um, there also was an article that I read that said in Alberta, the survey suggested that 65% of companies in Alberta are planning on hiring this year. 
The Edmonton film industry aims at generating $100 million a year. Last year, they did $25 million. Now, they're asking for some help from the city, but I'm sure that they are buoyed. If anybody has, has HBO and watched The Last of Us, um, that was the largest production in Canadian history. Did some filming in Alberta and in, uh, or sorry, in Edmonton and Calgary last year. And so obviously buoyed by that and a lot of exposure. The film industry is expecting some big things. Highway construction to begin over out near Leduc. That is going to be bringing some jobs. That's been given the go-ahead. And keeping with the airlines, Porter Airlines announces Edmonton as its latest destination. I've actually heard of Porter for probably 15 years because my brother-in-law, who is now a pilot with WestJet, worked with Porter for about 15 years ago. They are a business-focused airline. They fly Dash 8s. And I remember 15 to 20 years ago, because he talked about how amazing it is, I think because they serve free booze. I think that's the main reason people like them. But um, they were not going to come out to the West. And now here they are. So that's definitely going to be bringing some, some new jobs. There is a shortage of welders in Alberta. So Nate is ramping up its course for welders. So they are going to be pumping out a lot more welders because of the demands, because of all the construction that's going on. So you're going to see a lot of that going on at Nate. And then also it's a small sector, but the green uh, energy uh, sector is also creating some jobs as well. Um, so that was certainly some news as Alberta is still trying to diversify. The labor market, hottest in years. Alberta is well positioned to weather potential recession. Uh, basically, this came from the Business Council of Alberta. It estimates uh, that we're going to see an increase in the labor market, and uh, it also suggests there's going to be an increase in wages. And already, Alberta is the highest weekly earning in Canada. Best position province for recession, another headline. Alberta's, Alberta's employment rate is currently 5.8%, um, the lowest it's been in seven years. Uh, jobs jumped in December, 25,000 new jobs. Alberta job gains surpassed expectation of skilled labor shortage. So I, I obviously am bringing this to your attention to show you there is a lot of, uh, a, a lot of good things happening in the Alberta market. Alberta is a popular place to be. What happens when some place needs jobs? People come to this province. So that's what's happening now. We saw 32,000 people move to Alberta. Uh, it was a net gain of nearly 20,000. And, and uh, along with all these job prospects, there's cheap housing. Can we continue to be told that we have the most affordable housing in all of Canada? There we go. People moving to Alberta, where are they coming from? Uh, I've certainly helped a lot of people from Ontario move here. And this certainly backs it up. You can see that there is a decrease in population from Ontario, more people leaving. And they're not all coming here, but certainly a good percentage of them are coming here. I remember hearing a little over a year ago, it was right around January last year, helping my first person from Ontario buy a house here. And they said, the job prospects are good. I was like, I haven't heard that term in about four years. This is from Zucasa, five reasons why Edmonton is a great place to call home. I think we already know all this, but it's nice that it's being exposed to the rest of the country. So January 18th, the Realtors Association of Edmonton, Ray, had their uh, housing forecast. So it uh, took place uh, basically a week ago today. So here are some of the highlights. Realtors see Edmonton housing balanced out for 2023. There's a lot of other stats there, but for the most part, they're saying that it's conservatively going to dip just a little bit. However, not everybody feels that way. This is Remax Canada. They see the housing market expected to see a modest price increase in 2023. What I take from this is that whether it does dip a little bit or whether it improves a little bit, it's probably going to be more or less a balanced market, which isn't necessarily too bad. As I believe it was on one of these slides, it says it gives you a little bit of control and it gives you a little bit of choice. Everybody is mildly disappointed. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Edmonton real estate starts the new year as one of the most affordable cities. I mentioned this earlier, and it, another thing that backs that up, 
And when it comes to the rental market, Edmonton rental market likely to stay among the most affordable big cities. So you can see where there's a lot of jobs going on, a lot of people coming here. It's affordable place to live, whether you're renting or whether or not you're planning to buy. So what does all this mean? Again, and I just wanna make sure, so good job prospects in oil and gas and other sectors, highest weekly earnings in Canada, most affordable rental rates in all of Canada, most affordable real estate prices, no provincial sales tax, no land transfer tax, good quality of life. And for those of you that either manage your own properties or work with a property manager, you'll also know that we've got very favorable landlords and tenant policies and regulations. Pretty good place to invest. So again, the good news, bad news, short-term pain for long-term gain. High inflation, here for a while, six months, a year, could be here a year from now, still talking about above 2%. Again, the Bank of Canada talking about 3% towards the back half of the year and back to its target 2% sometime in 2024. High interest rates, will they still go up? I believe they talked about a pause today, did they not? Yes, they did. But potentially we've seen the last increase for a while, but who knows? Uncertainty with where the market is going. Well, might go a little bit up, might go a little bit down. We'll see. But the long-term gain is job growth population growth, increased rental demand, which in means increased rents, decreased vacancies, and an increase in property values. So, and I'm going to uh, steal a page from the Real Estate Investment Network, or RAIN, as I always love this slide, and it's basically the real estate success formula. And this basically, they suggest, could be anywhere from 12 to 24 months. And I have circled, or basically, everything I talked about, which would suggest where we are now, employment growth and population growth. And you can see where potentially we are trending. So we have a lot of uncertainty going on right now, but if you look behind and see what's happening, as, as we've said from this stage before, it seems that when the rest of the country is doing well, Alberta struggles. And when the rest of the country looks to be going on a downward trend, Alberta seems to be doing pretty good. I think that's why they all hate us. So it's never all green lights. There are always obstacles, which is why it's great to see you all here today, getting educated and learning. As I was talking to Valden, who's at the back there, the market always changes. And so for those of you that stay the same course, you're gonna get into trouble. But as the market changes and adapts and throws new things at you, you come to places like this and learn to adapt and you should be fine. So uh, just one more thing, just wrapping up, but you can meet up with a Rogel Me Mogul Realty Group agent to get further educated on where to buy and what to buy. Uh, Adrian's gonna talk about that a little bit, but I do have one more thing before I wrap up here. So for those of you that have ever been on a Zoom call with me and uh, uh, talking about you know, the advantages of investing in Alberta and specifically in Edmonton, one of the things that I like to talk about is that we can increase rents by as much as we want, once a year with 90 days notice. And then I jokingly tell people, but you don't wanna increase rents by like a thousand dollars because you might be the lead story on global television that night. And then we laugh because who would ever do that? Well, somebody did it. This landlord in an effort to try to get somebody out who was a high maintenance tenant and was constantly complaining, he decided to raise the rents by a thousand dollars. And that tenant took that landlord to task, went to the RTDRS and lost. And he now owes $10,000. So I guess now I don't have to just jokingly say that, I actually legitimately know that it can happen. So um, it's great to increase your rents, but maybe, maybe dial back on the $1,000. Anyways, that's all I have.